Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. From this video, we are starting with the new chapter that is Plant Kingdom. Or we can also write it as Kingdom Planting. This is uh, the third chapter in this unit of diversity. Now, whenever we use the term plants, the thing or the structure that appears to us or comes to our mind is something green, which is performing photosynthesis. But we will try to understand the basic classification before we actually take up all individual plant groups. But there are certain things which are going to remain common whenever we talk about plants. That means all the members in this kingdom, they are photosynthetic, they perform photosynthesis. And for performing photosynthesis, they have chlorophyll, that is the pigment, green pigment, which is essential for photosynthesis. Apart from chlorophyll, there can be other accessory pigments which we'll take up a little later also. And all of them, they are going to have cell wall which is made up of cellulose. So these are a few common uh, structures. The sex organs are going to be multicellular and jacketed. Sex organs are normally multicellular and jacketed. That means they are covered with certain structures or multiple cells with few exceptions that we will uh, also discuss. So these are some general characters. Now let us talk about some brief classification. The first classification that we are talking of is the general and then the next one will be the little technical. Now this classification is, where are these plants found? If they are found in water, we would call them aquatic plants and the ones which are on land, they are called the land plants. So this is just one classification based on habitat. In aquatic, normally algae are included and under algae, we would be talking about green algae, red algae and brown algae. So we would be discussing about these three types of algae. Land plants, they are further classified on the basis of whether they have vascular tissue or not. Vascular tissue means xylem and phloem. So here xylem and phloem is absent. These are the bryophytes or we put them under group bryophyta in which we would be talking about mosses and liverworts. That means the second group is where xylem and phloem are present. So this is the second group. Now this group is further divided on the basis of how are they going to reproduce. If they reproduce by spore formation, then that group is pteridophyta. And in this group, we would include ferns. And the next is reproduction by seed formation. And this is known as spermatophyta. Now, spermatophyta is further divided into two groups on the basis of where the seeds are. If the seeds are naked, not covered in any fruit, then that group is of gymnosperms. Here, naked seeds are there, whereas the other group is of angiosperms, where the seeds are in fruits. They are covered seeds. The seeds are going to be in, in, uh, enclosed inside the fruit. And angiosperm is further divided into dicot and monocot depending upon how many cotyledons 
are there in these seeds. So this classification is a very basic classification. Let us talk about one more classification. So now here we are classifying the plants on the basis of what kind of body they have. And here the main groups are cryptogams and phanerogams. Cryptogams include those plants which are non-seed producing. Now we can combine these two classifications also. Let us first draw this and then we'll compare the two. That means here there are plants which are going to reproduce but seed formation is not going to take place. So in this thallophyta in which algae would be included. The second group is of bryophyta where moss and liverworts are included and the third group is of pteridophyta in which ferns are going to get included. So here we would have thallophyta, bryophyta and pteridophyta and they reproduce by formation of simple structures which are called the spores but no seed formation and phanerogams or they are also known as spermatophyta. Here seeds are produced. So these are the seed producing plants and now they are classified into two categories that is gymnosperms and angiosperms. Same thing as we have discussed here the seeds are naked and in this case the seeds are enclosed in fruits and this group is further divided into monocot and dicot. This is on the basis of number of cotyledons that they have. So now if we have to compare and here we have this group gymnosperm and angiosperm. So if we have to compare these two classifications we have pretty much the same thing only thing is the way or the characteristics which have been used to classify them are different. In case of aquatic plants we have included algae and algae here are, have been placed in thallophyta and the reason why they are placed in thallophyta is because the body is thallus like not differentiated into root stem and leaf. Bryophyta they are without xylem and phloem and the reproduction is also by spore formation. Body is again not differentiated into true roots, leaves and stem. So these are the ones which are here. Pteridophytes they are land plants they have root stem and leaf like structure properly developed with vascular tissue but reproduction is by spore formation not the seeds and this category has only those plants which reproduce by seed formation so under which we have gymnosperms and angiosperms which we had under this spermatophyta the seed producing plants and here we were talking about the spore producing plant so whether we talk of this or that we have to discuss all these individual categories that means we will be talking about all three types of algae that is green red and brown we would be talking about mosses and liverworts their life cycle their examples we would be talking about forts and we would also discuss the gymnosperms all the gymnosperms and angiosperms and in angiosperms, we'll also try to understand how these monocots and dicots are different. So from the next video, we'll actually start discussing all these individual members. And this classification just helps us understand how 
these plants can be divided or classified and all of them are going to show certain specific characters which are exclusive to this kingdom and these two classifications just help us understand how we can uh, arrange them in different uh, ways by taking different characteristics. So from the next video we will take up algae.